Okay, guys, well, welcome to In Art Business Workshop. My name is Patrick. I run the marketing department here at Art Storefront. It's been doing that for about six years now. Um, we can kind of get into the agenda of the day. Um, first things first, as as we go through this thing, um, I'm probably going to be mentioning a lot of blog posts, podcasts, YouTube videos, links, reports, uh, and such. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll throw the links uh, or April will throw the links in into the chat um, at the bottom of your zoom button or bar or whatever there's a there's a chat button and you can click that and the links will go in there but you don't have to worry about it because after the show is over we're also going to email you guys all the links everything that we discussed and so if I'm mentioning something you don't have to worry about it or you're like oh I wanted to click on that like don't worry it's it'll just end up right in your inbox um, after sometime after this thing's over, along with a replay for the video. Um, so I'll be sending all of those things. And <clears throat> what I normally do is we play sort of like a, you know, a high level light demo of who we are, what we do um, that I recorded on this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, for the last couple of sessions, though, I've been mixing it up. I'm going to do that again today and, and, and talk about some other things. But we will email you a copy of that video as well. So if it's something you want to watch later, it's, it goes into a little bit more in depth of you know, the software and some of the features and, and sort of our whole program, which, which I will cover um, in just a different way. Um, since probably March of last year, I've been running three of these things um, a week, uh, which means I've been talking to literally hundreds of artists and photographers on a week in, week out basis. Uh, in addition to these sessions, the art business workshops, I also run um, some internal sessions with their customers. And why am I bringing all that up? I'm bringing all that up to say, I talk to more artists and photographers on a week in week out basis than I think any other human being on the planet right now. And I've been doing that for quite some time. I've also been doing digital marketing, uh, specifically digital marketing on how to sell art and photography uh, for a great many years. In addition to that, we have 5,500 customers or so now, and I look at their data um, quite closely actually. And these are artists and photographers all around this country and others, some of which are selling extremely well. So I get insights into who's capturing the most email addresses. How are they doing it? Who's selling the most prints? How are they doing it? Who's selling the most originals and commissions and uh, classes on how to paint and who are taking the most people into the national parks to teach them night photography. Uh, I bring all that up to say, whether you guys ever decide to do business with art storefronts, whether we're the right solution for you or not, I want the call to be valuable. I think I can help you. I think I have insights into what actually sells art and photography uh, in this crazy COVID world that we're living in right now. And I, I'd love to talk to you about it. So any questions that you might have as we go rolling along, um, I really do encourage you to ask them. It can be about anything too. It doesn't even need to be about what we do. Um, you have marketing questions. Do you have a question about boosting posts on Facebook? Don't ever boost posts on Facebook. It's a waste of money. Do you have questions about niche selection? Um, have you never sold anything, period, and you're just trying to figure out how to get started? Uh, are you wondering if there is some sort of magical email list of high net worth collectors that you can just get on and your business will explode? There's not. I can tell you that conclusively right now. No. Um, but in, in all seriousness, whatever, whatever questions you might have, I'd, I'd love to get into them. I'd love to um, address them as we sort of move along. And... You know, one thing that I like to talk about, and again, I go back to, um, you know, the fact that I've talked to so many of you guys over the course of the last, you know, call it year and change, is I've developed what I call like the art selling pyramid, okay? And I stole it from Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. I don't know if you've ever seen, I'm going to get myself out of this, so I'll go full screen. So, you know, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, whether you've ever seen this before or not, it's like a, it's like a way of thinking about life in which, you know, at the bottom are the physiological needs. We need to sort those first, right? Like every block of the pyramid, you have to sort the one below it before you can go the next, next layer up. And so you have physiological needs. We have to eat, we have to sleep, right? You have to take care of that. That's a daily activity. Every single solitary one of us needs to do that. You go up, you can get safety, right? You, you have a house, you start saving some money, and then you get love and belonging, and esteem and self-actualization, become a great human, all that wonderful. So off of that sort of water skiing on that concept, I've, I've, I've kind of come up with what I call the art selling pyramid. And I believe very thoroughly, okay, that it is the path to su uh, successful art business, photography business um, in 2021 and beyond. Really, it's, it's, it, it is essential. It is, it is the landscape, the facts on the ground as they exist right now 
uh, April 19, 2021. And they've been the facts like this for quite some time, and they're going to be the facts into the future. So I kind of want to explain this pyramid. Again, it follows follows Maslow's. you got to sort the bottom block, and then you move up to the next block, and on and on and on. And I want to start with block number one. So block number one is attention, right? And a lot of you guys on this call think you have a website problem, or you think you have a niche selection problem, or you think you have a problem where if you just got all your art photographed, then how, how are you going to figure out how to do that? Or you think if you started selling prints and merch, uh, that's your issue, or you think that you've got branding issues, or you think that whatever your problem is, it might be a legitimate problem and it might not, but I'm here to tell you that's not your problem. Your biggest problem, my biggest problem, all of ours, is getting attention, okay? By which I mean eyeballs to your art, to your photography. You can't even have a website problem until you solve the attention problem. We all need attention, okay? And it comes down to marketing on how you get that attention. Attention is the currency of the land. It is the currency of the land in 2021. With it, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. The world is your oyster. Without it, you're not in the game. And you know, it's, it, is, it is a profound fact uh, uh, that every single solitary person that I talk to, the whole entire year back, every art storefronts customer, even the ones that are, that are close to knocking on the $1 million a year uh, uh, level of business, not a lot of them, obviously, very, very small group, but even down to the ones uh, that are making $50,000 a year and the ones that are trying to get to 50,000, the ones that all have an attention problem. Currency of the land, and no different, okay, than in Maslow's need, uh, Maslow's chart, you know, th the physiological need of getting sleep and eating uh, for, for, for an artist trying to grow a successful business, attention is it, okay? And I always, I always use on these uh, presentations this analogy, uh, and, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of embracing it now. Early on, I was disgusted by it. But do you know who are some of the most powerful women, not just in the United States, but in the entire world? The Kardashians. Those women could decide to start painting in the next two weeks stick figures on canvas. And do you know what they would sell? Probably $30 million worth of art in the first year. Is that fair? No, it's not. But does it highlight what the currency of the land is? Yes, it does. It's attention. And guess what? It's not who the best artist is. It's not who has the best art. It's not who's the best photographer. If your stuff doesn't get seen, it does not sell, okay? Period, full stop. So attention, the bottom of the pyramid, just like in Maslow's, daily need, daily need. We need to eat daily, we need to sleep daily. We need to get attention and work towards getting attention, which means work on our marketing daily. Don't do that, the business is never gonna grow. You can never even have a website problem or any of the other problems. So block number one, the art selling pyramid. Block number two, before we get to it, you can see how it's got the lines on the outside of it, a border, right? There's a border. One is the business model, okay? What do I mean by business model? You need to be selling direct. There can be no one between you and the end purchaser, the end buyer. You need to be retaining the information, okay, of the people that you are selling your art to such that you can market to them in the future. And that sounds like, oh, of course, obvious, Patrick, sure. Do you know how many artists are not in this situation? A lot of them, okay? Do you know how many artists have spent the last 30 years of their life not being in this situation? A lot of them, right? If you are not retaining the information of your customers such that you can market to them in the future, then you never have the capability of creating number two, a collector list. I stole this concept loosely um, from this book. It's by Wyland, the whale guy, um, best-selling artist in the United States, I think most people would say and it's Don't Be a Starving Artist, awesome book. You guys should all buy this book. It's for charity, it's on his website. We'll send you a link, phenomenal read, quick, like literally a great book. He talks about the importance of his collector list, meaning a collector defined by Wyland, someone that buys in upwards of seven to eight pieces of his work over the course of their lifetimes, okay? And the numbers go up. Some people buy 20 or 30 or 40 of them. Um, it is one of the fundamental important aspects of running and having an art business, okay? If you wanna be successful, you wanna be on the path to success, you need to be cultivating a collector list throughout the course of your career. You need to be uh, catering to that collector list, you need to be treating them like VIPs, and you need to constantly be showing them uh, your art, your photography as the new stuff comes out and they will buy it. The, the, one of the primary reasons I see on these calls of folks that had robust, amazing, incredible businesses pre-pandemic, whether they were selling at shows and fairs 
whether they had great gallery representation or whatever they had going on um, pre-pandemic. Excuse me. If they had a collector list, they're doing okay still. If they didn't, all of a sudden they have zero revenue sources. All of their offline revenue sources are gone. And what are they supposed to do? Wait until the shows and fairs come back? Those things don't pay unless they're at 100% occupancy. You know, a show or a fair with 20% of the people showing up, you are not going to be ROI positive on that thing, uh, return on investment. And the art galleries, half of them are closed. Uh, the half that actually make it through this thing are going to get a pick and choose from the best artists. They're going to get a pick and choose more favorable terms. The 50-50 split is going to go to a 60-40 split and the like. So, and you don't keep your collector information. So it, it, it is imperative to understand those two. So that's the border, okay, of the second block. As we move one down, we can talk about the three ways to sell art, okay? There are three ways to sell art. Every single solitary artist, every photographer, uh, no matter what you sell, really, you need to understand that the three ways, three ways exist, and you need to be actively deploying each of them in your business as much as possible. Very few do. Very, very few do. Way number one, what is the best way to sell your art or your photography? Trick question here, in person, face to face, okay? Always has been, always will be. So to the extent that you have the ability to sell your art, your photography with your potential buyer face-to-face, -face, be in the same room, in the same space, however you go about that, obviously that's the best way to sell art. The problem is that we all are geographically fixed on this planet. Joni is, Emily is, Rita is, Marcelino is, Andrea is, okay? You all have to sleep, okay? You are incapable of having 15 conversations at once. So yes, we have to have a website, okay? The art goes up on the website. The website can sell for all of those situations. Uh, for people that are not geographically located where you are, when you're sleeping, uh, 25 people being on at the same time and selling at the same time, all capable with the website. Here's the dirty little secret about the website. The selling art or photography via your website is the worst way to sell, okay? It is the worst out of the three. Does that mean it's not important? No, it's absolutely important. It's foundationally important, but it's also the worst way. So the third way, uh, which should really be the second way because it, it's the next best thing, is it's essentially doing what we're doing right now. It is selling in either a one-to-one, -one, meaning just you and one other person, or a one-to-many, you and could have up to 500 people on the call, and it's selling art via live video, okay? No different than this Zoom call that we're doing right now. You know, if I email Joni and I say, Joni, I'm interested in your art, you have some, some really interesting background going on there, I'd like to see some of it. Joni goes, Patrick, no problem. Uh, here's my calendar. Let me just schedule a Zoom call. I'll show you a couple of my pieces. We can talk about it, get a chance to know you, and, and you can let me know what you'd like, right? That is the second most effective way to sell art full stop. And it doesn't matter if we're doing it one-on-one. -on -one. I don't care Zoom, Google Meets, Microsoft Teams, FaceTime, whatever. It is via video uh, 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 in this new format. Or the live art show example, right? The one-to-many. And, you know, it doesn't matter who you are or where you are on, you know, the art, the art pecking order or stack. The entire world is trying to figure this out right now, by which I mean, how do you best utilize video in a one-to-one -one, uh, selling way? There's a report. Your industry doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of reports. There's two. I think this is a fantastic one. I want you guys to download it and read it. I'm going to send a link. It is by Art Basel and UBS. And they call it the, the Global Art Market Report. And I'll just, I'll tease the table of contents because I think it's pretty awesome. Um, the Global Art Market in 2020, dealer sales, auction sales, art fairs, online sales, a global wealth and collector perspectives, uh, the economic impact and conclusions. And they have like this key findings to the report where, you know, they've got pretty graphs and a web page and the whole deal. It's actually a pretty awesome report. My takeaways from this report, uh, aside from the, you know, what you would expect yes, online is growing massively is a, is a larger part of sales, is how much art sold via live video this last year, even with high net worth collectors at the top end of the scale, a massive amount. So this, this new way of selling, okay, and you know, we, we, we are, are, are leaders in this particular aspect of, of selling art and have run multiple of these with customers and are getting better and better and better at it. What you're watching behind me is what we call a basement sale. We're gonna send you a link after the fact, don't worry. It is a painter. Uh, it is a painter that some reason doesn't have sleeves, that is in his garage studio. He is having a live art show. Uh, this particular one is streaming uh, live to Instagram, as well as his YouTube, as well as his Facebook pages. 
He's taking comments. He's taking questions. Uh, in this particular series, he did two of these and sold 62 pieces, a little bit over $30,000 Canadian in 15 days. That was, I don't know, three months ago, six months ago, seven months ago, just to show you another example. Do I have one here? Where is Nate? Da, 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 da. I maybe lost it. Hmm, let's see. Let's see. Bear with me. Sometimes my children get in here and mess up my presentation. So here's another example, just to give it some color, um, a different version. So this is Meg. She's also a customer. Here's another example of From, a live art show. And let me Again, in her basement, she's a painter and lives in Kansas City. In this particular instance, she sold, I think she had 75 pieces in the show. And she sold, I think, 74 or 73 in addition to that, I think a little bit over fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars US. Now, in her case, you know, she she does like the full art and you know the, the nice originals and everything else. You can see them in the back. This was like a bunch of leftover stuff, studies, this, that, and the other. The larger point is is just how insanely effective um, leveraging this type of technology is. And by the way, by the way, because now that I'm going to remember it, so Meg, okay, and and before you go saying. 6,300 followers on Instagram, okay? Good number, absolutely. Not massive number, okay? She doesn't have the biggest email list in the history of mankind, but you know what she did? Uh, I'll pay very close attention to in life. Mm. Number two, a collector list, okay? A collector list, and I wanna give you a for instance, a for example to underscore my points here because this is just like the most critical thing ever. Meg's case, this show, okay? On a Friday, the show was teased. Hey guys, look for your look to your email on Monday. I'm announcing a big thing. On Monday, the show is announced. It's gonna happen on Wednesday. On Monday in the afternoon, her collector list got an email, okay? Hey guys, uh, I just wanna sh let you know I'm having this live art show on Wednesday. If you wanna tune in, wonderful. But because you guys are my collectors and I love you, i.e. the VIPs that we're taking care of, I wanted to give you a look at the whole entire show ahead of time, okay? And what ended up happening? 46% of the sale, 46% of the show was bought before the thing even started. Her collectors snapped up that many pieces. That is the profundity of having a collector list. That is, that is, the, that is why the art selling pyramid is just so absolutely critical. And, you know, again, it doesn't matter whether it's, it's these shows um, or, you know, in, 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 in my buddy Matthew's case, um, he's also a customer, that he, had a, he had a full blown art show in COVID that he somehow got away with in Canada. And we ran a live art show of his gallery show in an actual gallery, right? So, you know, yet another way to leverage this technology. But the whole entire world is trying to figure this out right now, and rightfully so. It is, it is this third way of selling art. It is the, the most impressive thing, okay, that's happened in the art industry, the most profound uh, a seat change that's happened in the art industry since forever. I mean, full stop, right? It is absolutely the future. It gives you the ability to sell direct. It is, it, it, it's just profound and amazing in so many ways. And when I say the whole world's trying to figure it out, right? Like I go back to this snazzy report and they call them OVRs, okay? Which I think is a snooty way, online view, viewing room, right? Because they, they, they couldn't be bothered to call it a Zoom call, which is all it is, but they call it an online viewing room. I'll see you in the online viewing room there, Emily, okay? So, you know, it, it, it they're trying to figure it out. The artists at the highest levels, the Sotheby's, all the big auction houses, all the big galleries, they're all trying to figure it out, okay? Um, you know, the shows and the fairs, okay? They had your booth fee already because you had to leave a deposit. They send you an email, don't quit. We're gonna get a big virtual show together. It's gonna be awesome. What they don't know is how hard these things are to figure out, all the technological pieces and everything else. It's actually not that hard, it's easy, but there's technological difficulties. Try doing that with 75 artists. Good luck, let me know how it goes. You know, so many of them have just been terrible, but it remains, they are absolutely the future. And no, London, it, it, your collector list starts as an email list. London's asking a good question. He's asking, is a collector list an email list? It starts out as an email list. In order to have a collector list, you have to have some sales. In order to have a sales, you need to have an email list. So that's, that's its own little block of pyramids there, right? Um, critically important. But let me get back and finish my, uh, my, my, my snazzy pyramid here, and then we can get, get moving. Um, so those are the three ways to sell art. Okay. 
Every single solitary one of you needs to understand them. Every single solitary one of you, in my estimation, needs to start putting them into practice in your business, okay? The, the daunting one, obviously, not understanding your website situation completely, but the daunting one, obviously, is Patrick. I have to be on camera. I have to turn that on. I have to talk to people via video. Trust me, I hate being on video. I'm terrified about it. It does not matter, okay? People want to know you, artist, photographer, get to know what makes you tick, uh, get to know where Rita lives and what those palm trees are in her backyard, right? You are as much a part of the brand as your art is, okay? People always think that, like, they just are buying your art based on the image or they're buying your photography based on their image. Absolutely not. They want to know who the artist is. You're part of the brand. Get over it. We all look terrible on video, okay? I mean, how many different TV shows, because people of COVID are locked down, are, like, the talent? in their own basement or in their own like living room with like cheat ear things in like nobody cares nobody cares what you look like okay we all look ridiculous okay we all have crappy lighting and bad hair days just get on with it and start shipping it in your business so that's that's one of the three ways to sell art um the final block okay the final block is everything else okay what do i mean everything else do you have a retail gallery somewhere that's working and that is bringing revenue into your business fantastic Keep it going. We love revenue sources, but not until you're seeing to the other two. Not until you're constantly working on getting attention, okay? Not until you're constantly leveraging the three ways to sell art and the gallery on top. Do you have an online gallery that's working? Maybe you got a little Etsy, a little Redbubble, a little Fire Art America, whatever it is. Is that working and bringing revenue in the business? Fantastic. But do it in addition to building your own business, your own attention, your own three ways to sell art. Because obviously you don't get to keep the customer information in any of those instances. Uh, are you doing the show in their circuit? Wonderful. I want that to come back. I think it's a fantastic way to gather leads. I think it's a great way to sell art in person, but you've got to do it in addition, right? So that's, that's sort of the stack. Um, that's, that's sort of my, uh, my art selling pyramid and it's the whole ball game. It's, it's quite literally the entire ball game. And if you want to build, you know, a good sized business, a sustainable art business in which you actually control the rules, uh, in, in which in which a pandemic can't come along and rip the rug right out from underneath you, you have to you you, ha you cannot ignore the fundamentals of that particular pyramid. And so people wonder like, oh, art storefronts, what do you do? I've just told you. Most people think, oh yeah, I write a website, fantastic. I just told you the website. The website is the worst way to sell art. I just told you the website is the last of your big concerns. Okay, none of you guys can even have the website problem until you fix the attention problem. So what do we do at art storefronts more than anything else? We help you fix the uh, attention problem. We teach you to market. We teach you to market all year long and we don't ever stop. We are essentially an art business university and you get a website out of the deal too, right? It's quite literally like signing up to college and you know when you get the college email address, that's what it is. You get a website too, but you get a marketing education. You get a BA in how to grow a successful art business. Um, so that's what I would say. That's what I would say. That's sort of my rant on what you need to be doing. Now, of course, I can talk about the software. I can talk about what we can do. I can talk about the print integrations. Um, we could talk about any of that stuff. Um, and, you know, there's, there's, there's a couple of different ways to ask questions. If you are one of the brave ones and you have your camera on and you want to do the old school hand raise, I got you. We'll see those. We'll get you in the queue. Otherwise, for everyone else on the Zoom, there's a participants bar at the bottom, okay? And if you click that, there's a way to digitally raise your hand, and that sort of gives me a cue, and I just kind of go down the line that way. Um, if you just want to leave your questions in the Zoom chat, um, um, you know, and, and, I'll, and I'll pull those up and I'll answer. Um, for everyone watching on the socials, um, you know, this we're pulling those comments in right too. Uh, right as well, right? Like if I pull myself out, just to answer this one now, Zon, how do the collectors see the preview show? Um, a whole bunch of different ways that you can show the collectors. Oh, how do you the collectors see the preview show? In in that case, they didn't see the actual show. They just saw all the works that were going to be in the show. Um, but yes, it was via email. So that's that's correct. So you can ask questions all those ways. Um, I will pull in all of them, um, and you know your questions can be about just about anything. Um, love to love to get into any and all of them. So Marcelina, uh, Marcelino is first, and I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. Uh oh, Marcelino is here and just disappeared. Oh, there you are. I see you. Okay, I'm unmuting you, Marcelino. You'll have to hit the microphone icon in the in the bottom left. I'll let you know when you get it. It's like the light, little mic icon. Yep, gotcha. Yeah, I'll see. Like, how much uh, work will it take some to run the website? Like, you know, on a 
daily basis apart because I have like also like other other I, I want to get another website going as well. Mm -hmm. uh, can we like integrate put website also? Can we integrate actually two questions? How much time will it take uh, to run the website? Mm -hmm. And can we integrate another website into it? Like a uh, I got a page going on right now as well as Facebook and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's no like direct integrations where like one website is embedded in another. It's its own standalone entity, but it's very easy to link out of one shop to the other shop or one site to the other site, right? You just do it in the menu. That's what that's what most people do. In terms of the the you know how how difficult is it to ever get it up running and rolling? We get most people live in 14 days or less. Um, once the website is up, it takes very little maintenance. It's just how many new pieces are you going to be adding or, you know, these types of things, right? It's, it's, it's pretty easy though. And there's not a lot that you have to do to the website. You have to upload your logo. You have to fill out the about me section. You have to upload the pieces, set your markups, set what media types that you want to offer the prints on. Are they prints, originals, commissions, merchandise, you know, any of those things. And that's it. There's no like you know, hacking the website or moving things around or changing fonts and colors. You don't need to do any of that. All that's already set up. So that's what I would say. One more question uh, yeah. on a patent and a copyright. Mm -hmm. Patent and patent, you know, you know uh, they say like patent on the work that I do and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you can, you know, if you if you want to individually patent and copyright each of your works, you certainly could do that. I don't know of anyone that does do that. Um, you know, I think you're largely protected uh, regardless, because you're the creator, right? So it's like if you created something and you had proof that it was your creation and you saw somebody else using it and selling it, you could go to a lawyer and you could sue that person and I'm sure you would win. Um, but mm -hmm. it's 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 not a big situation that we see coming up, meaning you put your work up, somebody magically steals it, they're going and selling it and you know making a bunch of money. Like, I have not seen that happen once. Do you know how doggone difficult it is to sell art and photography in the first place? Do you think somebody's going to come to your site, steal it, and go sell it somewhere else? Like, it, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Uh, Thank uh, you. Yeah, that's my pleasure. I always laugh at that one, though. It's like, it is so hard already to have the, the thing. To, so there's people, like, running around, you know, steepling their fingers and waxing their mustaches about all this art that they're going to steal and, like, go do. It always makes me laugh. Um, okay, Chiquita, you're up next. And you'll have to unmute. Okay, yep. I figured it out. Yep, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I finally figured out how to unmute. I'm so sorry. No, you're all good. Um, I've been wanting to get on one of these with you. My question is, I have um, a lot of artwork that I've sold way underpriced, like way, like Don't people. Don't worry, it uh, happens all the time. People have told me yeah. I have been yeah. duping myself mm -hmm. because I totally have been selling to like friends and neighbors and, you know what I mean? Yep. Giving them as gifts and things yep. like that. And I, I I have not never sold anything in a professional way, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But but um, I recently had like a really well known artist see some of my stuff at an art store. Okay. And they were like, "What in the world are you doing?" Like they just totally like this stuff. You your stuff. I have pictures on my phone. They were like, "Your stuff is great. Mm -hmm. It's so amazing." And I don't know why you're selling it. I mean, I'm selling stuff like a hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, large paintings for 100 bucks you yes. know and so i got to get out of that so i wonder like i'm not well known you know what i mean mm -hmm. that's my problem i'm not well known so do i need to start somewhere else i mean start on another le level or should i start on this level yeah i mean if happens? you're if you're already selling the work right and despite the fact that you're selling it for much lower prices then that tells me you don't have a is your art good enough problem you just have a marketing problem that you need to start working on um, you know, the, 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 the lower pricing thing is classic because it's like, you know, it's, it's like endemic in the artist community. It's like cancer in the artist community and, you know, the infection rates are quite high, sadly. Right. Um, <laughs> there's a, there's a number of ways that we solve it. Some people, and, and don't laugh at this because I'm not kidding. I've done this. I will log into their website and raise all of their prices, like 40% without telling them. And then I'll tell them after the fact, and I'll be like, I took care of it. Just don't even look at them and get on with your life, right? But you know, there's in 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 business, you know, we're we're all terrified. Or let me say, even before business, just as human beings, we're all terrified, right? We want we want that validation that that what we're creating is awesome, and you know, a, a lot of those like psychological tropes that just lead to underpricing the work. But in business, all you have to do is ask yourself, is and this should be about most situations. Ask yourself. 
is this decision I'm about to make a reversible decision or not? Meaning once I've made it, can I just go back fairly easily? And the price point on an item is one of those decisions. Meaning you, Chiquita, could say, add a zero to every single solitary price you quote. I don't care if it's friends, family, what, add a zero, right? If they say no, or if they don't buy it, it's very easy to drop that zero off, right? It's gone. Nothing loved, nothing lost. And so, you know, if you're in a position now where you're still trying to figure out whether you can do that, you know, have a strong cocktail, put a zero on every single solitary one and see if you keep getting the sales. If you get the sales, you've got nothing to worry about, my dear. You just need to get, create more work and do more marketing, right? Um, or get a good friend to raise the prices like in my original example for you and just don't look. Oh, she muted yourself again. You might, I might need to ask you to unmute again. Hold on. Are you there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you so yeah, uh, Thank you so much because that's, that is the fear. I know. You know, it's like, well, they won't buy it if it's more, you know, but they are buying it. That's the thing. Yes. And they're asking me, do I have more pieces, you know? Yes. And I'm like, I'm you loving, know, I'm loving these questions. To go with a piece they already bought. Yeah. I'm, you know? I'm loving these questions. To go with this. Yeah. If you're, I mean, how many pieces have you sold? 10, 20, 30? So far, uh, man, I've been selling for like 10 years. Yeah. So you've been, so you've and been selling. I've been time. selling stuff. The highest I've sold something is like 250. Oh my gosh. And add a zero, Chakita. Add a zero. <laughs> I know. And this artist, like she hit me, like mm -hmm. she hit me in the arm. She's like, what in the world? You know, and yeah. she's she sells like all a lot. She flies all over. She, you know, the, when we went to the reason why I knew she was a pretty famous because the store we went to, they sat her down and they were all the people were bringing stuff to her. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't even have to like shop. You know, they were bringing these yeah. things to her. And I was like, who is this lady? You know, but yeah, anyway, I, I just wanted to know, like, is this a place since you're saying that you have permission? I will buy this website from you for sure. But you have permission to change the price on anything. In my I'm going to, you think I'm kidding? I will log in and do <laughs> it. I will log in and do it. I'll send you a, I'll send you a text message after and just say, don't worry about you it. Chiquita, it's done. I, yes. I totally underpriced, but thank you so much. I'll yeah. let you get to someone else, but thank you so much. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Yeah. It, 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 it becomes like so easy once you've done it a couple of times. It's like one of these hurdles that you just get over, but you have, you know, you, 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 you realize that like, it's a reversible decision. Emily, I see your hands. Um, you know, it is it is changeable at any time, okay? And no one was ever even going to know that your prices were higher because they have lives and they have cat videos to watch and everything else, okay? Like, we're, we're too busy. We get distracted. Like, no one knows what your prices were. It is it is the easiest thing to do ever. Now, now that first time Chiquita goes, $2,500 is my price. In That's going to be hard. That's going to be hard, right? But, you know, after you do it once, you'll get, you'll, you'll, you'll get better and better. Um, okay, it's going to go Rita, Frank, and then Emily, I'll get yours. I saw your hand. Um, so go ahead, Rita, you're up next. Okay. Um, hi, Patrick. Hi. For doing this. Oh, my um, pleasure. Uh, I need help on all sides. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been a successful artist. Mm -hmm. um, I've sold paintings for the last 15 years. I sold paintings in the four figures. Um, I've come, I do large abstracts, and I've come from a background where I my paintings are large and heavy, so mm -hmm. one of my first problems is shipping. I don't know how to ship stuff. And and uh, my website's been sort of stale. Mm -hmm. I, uh, technology is the most difficult thing for me. Mm -hmm. In the meanwhile, and none of that is on my website. Um, I don't have I don't have an e-commerce website. I don't have pay, I don't have prices on my website. Yeah. I don't have any of my most recent works on my website, and I started doing little stuff. Like now, I'm doing some chiclets, mm -hmm. and I'm doing like cards and prints that are easy to ship because I don't know how to go about shipping for the big stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and you know, I am, I am trying to um, get a new start. Yeah. And um, I, I need to do a little bit of everything. I, I, I like the idea of the selling out of my studio. I have an outside studio here in Florida. Mm -hmm. That might be attractive to people, you know, of gardens too, you know, maybe show yes. for my art in the gardens with a video, but all I that. don't even I know it. how to do all that and how to upload it. So, you know, I, I just really need help on all ends. I don't even know where to start. It's overwhelming. That's that's why we exist. That's what we teach. I mean, I you know, I, I, I think there's never been a better time personally 
to be an artist or a photographer because the way that the world is going, you can truly sell internet. You, you guys have the ability to create these things, okay? You don't have to go to China for an injection molding or go see some manufacturer. You create it out of whole cloth. And then if, you're, if you actually learn the selling aspects of it, you can sell worldwide, which is absolutely phenomenal. Now, there's some downsides to the business. You just mentioned the shipping. The shipping is a huge pain in the you know what, but guess what? It's also not a problem. Then you know what the problem is? Selling. You know what's not a problem? Figuring out the shipping after you've sold, right? So the, the, I say all that to say, the biggest problem for you is you have to learn the technology. And let me tell you, the first year, you know, if you were to sign up the first year, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, it's gonna suck. You're gonna be pulling your hair out of your head. You'd be like, what is this? I don't get how this works. You're making me post on Facebook. Now I gotta go live on a sale. Now I gotta send an email address. Now I need to run a sale. Like all of that, all of that just straight up is, is a learning curve. But you know what? what? What are the alternatives? This is what I keep saying on these calls. Like, what are the alternatives for you guys right now? Are you just gonna take a year or two off from this aspect of your business and not sell anything? It's like, that's not, that's not an alternative, right? So, you know, I believe really firmly that the world has changed. And, you know, one of the best things that we have, I think, is, yes, we have this incredible digital education, but it's the calls like these that, that we do internally with our customers. They're, they're weekly, 50 weeks a year, essentially. And you get a whole bunch of people that are in your exact same shoes, right? And you end up becoming friends with these, these folks, and you're all pulling your hair out of your head together. And then the next thing you know, you wake up, it's a year and a half later, you just did two Facebook posts, an Instagram post, you sent an email, you have a sale running, and you did a live, and you're like, whoa, what's happening to me? I've changed, right? How did I figure all that out, right? It was a, it was a tough year to get there, um, but we figured it out. But that's, that's, that's what we do. We, we, we teach you guys marketing all year long, all the various different aspects, and then not only that, you can come and get help at any point in time, at any point in time. So we can help you. Yeah, I've done a little bit of my marketing. I've lately, I'd signed up with a constant contact where I can mm -hmm. I have a good email list of like 1,200 people good from the you. past. Yeah, thank, God. Yeah, thank God. And I still haven't really contacted the VIP thing. I really like that from people that bought more stuff. Maybe I could personally, you know, um, approach them. But I've put the constant contact stuff out and that's been mm -hmm. helping a little bit. And I yep. sold some paintings that way. Yep. But um you know, uh, I, I got to do a lot more than that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. We can, we, we can help you, Rita. Request a demo, trust me. We can help you. Okay, and, yeah. uh, and that one question I have yes. with the website, you know, it's sort of stale. It's still got beautiful paintings on it. It's got a bunch of paintings that's sold, and I marked them sold. I'm not sure why I should take them off, but I need to incorporate my new work and my chic lace and my small stuff, and yes. can, it can all be done in one website, yes. right? Yes, yes. We, I yeah. also teach art classes and that could be a subcategory. Oh, I love that. Like I love that. that. And, we we have we have te we have customers that are doing insanely well teaching classes and selling those on their website. Like phenomenal, phenomenal business that is. I, I love that as a revenue source for artists. I love it. Uh -huh. And and they teach online. Yeah. Yep. They usually okay. just put they usually just put the product in the store and then they sell a bunch of them and then they um you know, they'll email out the private Zoom code and then they'll just teach on the Zoom and that's that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they pay through what? A PayPal or something? Well, so with us, every website that gets set up, you have your own merchant account, right? And so if they buy any, the merchant account is attached to your bank account. So any order that you get in, the money just goes right into your bank account. Done. They can pay. They can pay with Google Pay. They can pay with Amazon Pay. They can pay with PayPal. They can pay with Visa, Mastercard, American Express. All of it. We have all of that ready to go, integrated, done. Okay. So see, so you have your own pay payment. Uh, exactly. Uh, okay. Yeah. Do you get a percentage when things sale? It depends. On some items we do, on some items we don't. Um, it's sort of why we do the the demo process because they have they understand all the the details about the plans and the various different levels, and they'll, they'll explain it all to you. So what happens? And April puts these links in the chat. What happens when you request a demo is they set up like a ten to fifteen minute call. They find out about you, and then you can ask all the nitty gritty questions about pricing and plans and this and that. If you like what you hear, then you schedule the full demo, which goes like an hour and shows all the bells and whistles of the software and how we integrate with the printers and markups and media types and merchandise and all, and all of that jazz. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. That sounds great. Love it. Love it. Yeah. And I and I and I do love that tropical background. I mean, there's just you know, it's inviting. Yeah, I'm just sitting outside because it's a nice day. You know? Yeah, 
Yeah, it looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Vita. Okay, next is going to go Frank, and then Emily, I owe you, and then Joni. So go ahead, Frank. And Frank, you'll need to unmute. I'll let you know when you get it. Bottom left-hand corner. Yep, gotcha. There we go. Hey, man. Uh, yeah, so I've sold, you know, on um, uh, for galleries, on art websites, at mm -hmm. conventions. Um, I'm on Saatchi. I have a website. Mm -hmm. um, my question, I guess, is your website... I would like to keep my own website and maybe have an additional website that your stuff is on. What do yeah. normally people do? Do they, do they move their website over or do they start a second website for what you offer? It's, it sort of depends, right? Like, you know, you get a lot of people that had a pretty portfolio site or had old sites that didn't have, they weren't making any sales at all. So it's a very easy decision for them, right? They've never done any marketing. They just move it over, boom, done. Yours, depending on how long you've had them, how much traffic are they getting? Uh, uh, how many links are built up to them? Do they have great organic traffic already? Uh, is there is there a, a business need for it, right? Like if you've got like a service based business, like do you do you look at it that way? I mean, I'll, I use a I use a Thor example, and I can just pull it up really quickly so I can show you. You know, we have we have a lot of customers that are working service based photographers or working commercial photographers in some capacity, right? And in those instances, what a lot of people will end up doing is let me just get you out of there for a second. You know, here's this guy's main site, right? Projects, portfolios, motion, uh, stock archive, wildlife thing. But if you click on fine art, it leaves his main site and then it goes to his fine art site, right? Which is where he's selling all of his originals, his prints and his limited editions. And so you can do it in that capacity. Um, you, can, you can really just do it any which way you want. I think the important thing to understand though is that once you're into serious sales mode, you want any time that someone's in a buying intent on our site because we have so many different bells and whistles that are gonna be better at converting than anything that you've had before, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, cool. And then I guess another question is, what's the percentage of stuff that sells, you know, original art versus all the POD prints and um, merch that you guys have? Like, is there a, a percentage of, does the original art sell more than the prints or, or how does that, well, in, 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 in your experience? Yeah. So it's, it's, I, I get variations of this question all the time. So my wife has a PhD in statistics. I could give her access to the entire customer database and say, tell me what sells the best. And she probably wouldn't even be able to do the calculation because it is so varied and all over the place. There's some people that only sell originals and they just kill it. There's some people that only sell uh, uh, commissions, right? You get this one gallon that's in the pet niche. Okay. And she does custom hand-drawn portraits digitally of pets. And she sells like 40 to $60,000 a pop. But she doesn't sell any prints because all they want is the custom one-off, right? We've got people that sell the entire range on down to the merchandise, everything in between, like literally everything in between. I think the more important, it, what you're really asking in that question is, I believe uh, uh, quite firmly that everyone's customer, everyone's followers, us, Art Storefronts is a brand, you, Frank, and everything you've done, Rita's, your followers follow into a bell curve, Okay. And just like a bell curve, it's a socioeconomic bell curve, okay? Down here on the bottom, you have the lower income folks. They're gonna like, they're gonna share, they're gonna comment, they're not gonna buy a lot, they don't have a lot of money. Then we have lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class, and then we have the high net worth individuals, right? So if you know that and you realize that your followers, the people that know you all fall into that, the thing to do is, do you have the price points in your store for each of them? Do you, right? So that's the key thing mm -hmm. to have. Like, I like to have the price points in the store. Yes, at the low end, and the merch is incredibly helpful for that. It's like, do you really care about selling coffee cups, right? Or, you know, throw pillows or whatever else? You might, you might not, but it gives you the opportunity to have a price point at the lower end of the scale. So too, though, is the high end of the scale. And so many artists, I'm talking to you, Chiquita, so many artists underprice themselves. Like, I would want something in your store that costs $45,000. And I don't care if it ever sells. You might just have a high net worth individual that comes by who defines, who, who wants to live their life by people knowing they're rich by knowing the price tags on things, right? So you have to have those high net worth pieces in your store too. And one of the, one of the massive errors I see is a lot of times artists, you know, yes, will price too low, but they'll also price too high. Like, you know, starting prices in their shop is like 1200 bucks. Well, okay. How many stores do you go into where the prices start at $1,200, right? Like, there's not a lot of sales going on in those things, right? For a reason, because it's high end like that. So, you know, I, I take everything back to retail sales. Like I want your store to have a bunch of different aisles and a bunch of different merchandise in it that I can go perusing around that's in my budget, right? Yes, up to the high end stuff. So I think that's the, 
the the smart way to approach it um and and, and to think about it okay all right thanks yeah and what is that monitor by the way at that angle do you draw on it uh yeah it's a cintiq mm -hmm. so you know I, I sit here and draw i, I do digital I, I work in storyboards so i do a lot of digital art myself yeah. i mean i guess that's yeah, another question too if i do digital art i could just upload that and we could just sell prints of that stuff right all day long all day long that's the yeah. that, that's that's the best part of it right because when you sell the digital art like so the way the way that our print integration works is we have we have are you in Canada or the United States? You're in the US. US. So you can decide to integrate either with Bay Photo on the West Coast or graphic dimensions on the East Coast. But in either case, you know, you upload the piece, you pick what media types you want to print them on, and then an order comes in, you get paid, the printer gets paid, your logo gets slapped on the top of the box, off it goes. They ship it. You touch yeah. nothing. POD, right? Yeah, and cool. it's also POD. Yeah, cool. yeah. It's also POD with all the merchandise too, which, you know, yeah. is also. And I mean, I've been, I've been on Saatchi and Fine Art America mm -hmm. and, and uh, some other sites. And I guess the, what you guys offer that's different is, right, the marketing, because Saatchi doesn't really have a marketing component to their site. And you don't you keep can, your customer you data. Sell. You're not keeping your customer data. That's the biggest problem, right? Like, you know, and, oh, and, yeah. and you guys give that up. No, the artist owns right. everything with us. Everything. You own everything. The merchant account is yours. The email account is yours. The website is yours. Uh, the the customer list, of course, is yours. Like that's that's the only sustainable way to grow something, right? Like, you know. Right, right. It, yeah, it, they keep that. They keep that secret. Oh, of course they do. It's because it's the, it's the currency of the land, right? And it's like, you know, yeah. I don't know how long you've been doing your whole entire artistic career, but my guess is, is if you knew the rules when you started, your email list would be ten times the size it is right now. Probably twenty times. Probably a hundred times. Your collector list would probably have like another twenty or thirty or forty or fifty names on it, right? Like it's that is the game changer towards lasting wealth. Straight yeah, up. It's the old the old gallery method is they they keep that so that's proprietary information. They never give that up. Hundred so, percent. I mean of course and, not. And it's cool. I mean, look, I like selling at galleries because I like being on the walls and I like being have access to their base and I'll always sell at galleries. It's a fifty percent yes. um, you know, sales figure, but I feel it's worth it to get the exposure to that client base. But you've got to do stuff yourself. You've got to do point. exactly right. You, you you can't put all your eggs in that basket, right? Like go back to the pyramid. It's gotta be it's gotta be after your your deal with the other two, right? And and building something that you have that you own. So yeah. Yeah. That's what's Very cool. That's good. I'll let somebody else go. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Emily you're up next and then it'll go to Johnny. Hey there, hey. my name's Emily. Hey Emily. Um, I am, so this is where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I uh, just graduated college. Um, I got an art degree in, graduated May, 2020. So in the middle of a pandemic. Good times, uh, good times. Yeah. yeah, it's been something. So yeah. um, as far as like my art career goes, I've been doing sales in the Pittsburgh area and on Instagram mm -hmm. and I've been doing okay I like made a goal for myself um I'm at like being shown in like a few galleries in the Pittsburgh area I'm doing prints I have a collaboration going with like my sister who's also an artist mm -hmm. and but here's the thing is that I you know I understand that like gallery fees are a thing it's yeah. just that like there goes like half my sales so yes. I know that like you are talking about um doing like online and i think that that like is a good like building your own business for yes, yourself not exactly. for just like um you know working with a bunch of uh like galleries and stuff which is great yeah. like but uh, but anyway so i i'm still exploring like my style but i want to be able to like keep that like open exploration going mm -hmm. um but I also am like in a dual career because of course I graduated in a pandemic. So I'm trying to just survive. Yes. Um, and I, I made a goal to sell my like, or set like to be able to sell like my month's rent. So I'm doing that and mm -hmm. I'm like getting past that. But like I said, I'm in a dual career and I, I need time to be able to put into building my own business. Mm -hmm. So um, I do have a couple other questions, but just starting off like with that, um, what are your what are your thoughts? Do you have any um, like I don't know? Rec I, I mean, I, I love I love where you're at because you're you're so young and you're learning the rules before you're getting started, which is fantastic, and that's gonna that's gonna help you out massively. Um, number two, I would get a job immediately. I would get a job immediately. Eighty percent of our customer base probably has a full time job and is trying to figure it out. The reason the reason I say that is that 
it'll give you it'll give you the income and the air cover that you need to figure out your style, figure out your name, figure out really what you want to do, start generating the sales until you eventually want to become a, a full-time artist is what I would say, what I would imagine, right? Yeah. Um, and you said your sister is too. Is she a full-time artist? Um, no, she she has a like a full-time job. So yeah. she works, yeah, she works for Amazon. I'm like just, I work for Starbucks. So yeah. Um, yeah. And you get you got to get rid of that job because Starbucks is good, but only if they pay for your education. You've already got that one sorted. So now, now, like, could definitely get a try to get a better day job. But that's just me. I'm looking gotcha. at you like like you're my younger sister. But I I want you to start out. I want you to start out with a job to have that guaranteed income where you're not reliant on on art uh, uh, paying your bills. I love that you have the goal. That's amazing. Don't get me wrong, but I don't want that added stress in your life. Of you know, it it, it, it takes it it will take you. Okay three to okay. five years to build anything of value in today's digital landscape. I didn't say that, Steve, okay. Jobs, Steve Jobs did, and he's so right. So you have to have the context of how long that's gonna take. I want you to have the air cover of a good job while that's all going down, so that's what I would say. In the meantime, keep building that email list, keep marketing on the socials, uh, try the live art show concept. I'm gonna send you a couple of them, you see what they look like, you could run one of those today. I know you have this thing sitting right next to you, press one button, go live on Instagram, and just. Hey guys, it's Emily. Um, I did a couple of new pieces, a new series. It's really hard with this camera cutting me off. Doggone it. I did this new series, and my green screen's making it look a little circusy. This is a canvas print. It's ready to hang. Uh, I'd normally sell something like this. Listen to this, Chiquita. I would normally sell something like this for $575, but because of this live art show and I'm trying to get my business going, I'm willing to let it go today for $275. In addition to that, I have acrylic prints, right? And this is just you talking on Instagram, being you. Throw your throw your buds in, hold the phone up, show your newest series, talk about it. Acrylic, ready to hang, beautiful. Uh, normally goes for such and such. I'm willing to sell it for that, right? You can get the merch and start peddling the merch, right? You can have free giveaway Fridays. Just work on your marketing, because um, I'm assuming you're probably not ready to sign up with for us yet. But I would follow what we do. I would follow our our YouTube channel, which is free and which is awesome, or our Instagram account. Um, but I would go back, I would go back in your case only, and I would watch, I would binge, I'm trying to pull it up now so we can actually see it. And April, will you just put a, um, a link to our YouTube channel in the chat? Um, I don't need to show it, you can, find, you can find it, we'll send it to you afterwards, but there's a ton, my point is there's a ton of marketing you can do right now. You have a huge leg up because your, your generation gets every single solitary aspect of digital, you're doing it all day, every day anyway, right? So yeah. keep grinding on the marketing, get a better job, get out of the Starbucks, it's not paying enough, you could do better, you're smarter than that. Um, which I go to Starbucks every day. Okay, which is not to say I don't like Starbucks. I like Starbucks, but I, I want I want you to have something for a couple of years that's going to give you the air cover to get this thing up off the ground and get it earning like 20, 30, 40, 50 grand a year. And then at that point, you're like, okay, cool. I'm not going to be stressed financially. I can hop over. But my dear, you're in a great place. You're learning the rules of the game just when you're getting started. And you got your whole life ahead of you. So I'm I'm, I'm loving where you're at, and, I, and I'm loving that okay. you're doing the research. All right, cool. Um, the other question that um i do have for mm -hmm. you is so i know that you mentioned your like pyramid mm -hmm. um and i think that that was really helpful i took some notes down on that but mm -hmm. like also i was wondering so i know that like selling art it like the kind of like and i i've heard this from like fellow artists that have like lived in other countries mm -hmm. um sometimes like the rules in like other countries it's kind of like rude to market here for yourself so like is that who are like, who are those friends what? who are those friends give me the cell phones I will call them after this thing and properly reprimand them. Okay. Those are, those okay, are, cool. do not, whoever that is, cell phones, I will call. Um, you have to market yourself. Okay. Everyone okay. in the, you, you, the difference, okay, between selling and not selling in today's day and age is marketing full stop. Anyone that's successful is doing the marketing. Okay. There is, okay. there is, there, the, the worst lie that has ever been sold to the art industry happened in like the 1200s or the 1300s or the 1400s. And there was some royal court. They just decided to pay some artist uh, to be the royal artist, and all they had to do is create, and they get to live in the castle, right? And for some reason, that has been like memorialized that that is a real thing. That is not a real thing. That is nonsense. Maybe that happened to that one guy, but other than that, that is nonsense. You have to do the marketing. There is no shortcut to doing the marketing. There's zero shame in doing the marketing. You can do it your way, but don't think anything good comes easy, right? Like, we're not in a world where you can just create. I mean, how many people are creating awesome art on Instagram on a daily basis when you're on there, right? Like, how many people are creating awesome art on TikTok on a day? How are you going to stand out from any of them, Emily, by not doing the marketing? You're not. 
that's it right be like the kardashians you know i'm not saying you have to get there like the kardashians we can all we can all argue about you know what level of integrity they went and got that attention with but what we cannot argue on is those girls aren't flying commercial anymore right you got to respect yeah. you got to respect what they've been able to pull off so you know yeah. you, you you can you can do it too but do not listen to those people and i guarantee you those people that are telling you that those other artists are not successful okay okay yeah that's okay um and then the last question i had mm -hmm. um would be like so i've done a couple murals and i like that's like right off the bat it's it's a lot of money for a lot of work yes but i really like doing it because it's large you get um you get your voice out there it's yes. like a huge canvas to express what you want to say yes. and like does your website have the tools to be able to market that yeah, oh, 100 percent. I mean, it, to, to market the murals, all you're looking to do is get somebody to ring you up, right? So you need you, yeah. you need a, you need a page with the murals that you've done on it, uh, and that's it. And then you just need to market, right? That's okay. it. So yes, that's the, very very easy. And I and I and I love the thought of murals too, because you know, great name ID, get your name out there, um, fun things to market, cool things you can do with them for sure. Okay. All right. Cool. That's it. Thank you so much. No, I appreciate my, your no, time. No, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Um. Okay. I think we have. Two Jonies. I know, Joni, you're raising your hand, but there's also one in the queue. Is this you, Joni Chardon, or is there two Jonies? It doesn't look like it's you. Okay, I'm going to get the other Joni, and then I'll get you, Joni. I'll go Joni one, then I'll go Joni two. So, Joni Chardon, you're up first. Are you there, Joni Chardon? You have to unmute. It's the mic microphone, bottom left-hand corner. Okay, while she's figuring out, Joni, you're up. So, Joni Herman, go ahead. Can you hear me? I can. And I really like okay. this background going on here, whatever's going on. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, my situation is um, I've been in, in business as an artist. I've um, actually, uh, I was thinking about you. Uh, I'm sorry, I already forgot your name. Uh, uh, because I've had a mural business, a successful mm -hmm. mural business. Oh, Emily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've been um, a licensed contractor, which has gotten me into some of the big builders and some of the high-end homes in Southern California. Um, Where in Southern California do you live? Orange County. Where in Orange County? Uh, I'm in Anaheim, but most of my work is in Newport Coast. Yeah, I live in Newport Beach. Oh, okay. Oh, you are? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to say that I, I really appreciate how positive you are with everybody. You, you can take something that could potentially be negative and you turn it around, which is really encouraging. Oh, thank but, you. Uh, so my, my situation is that um, I'm looking at moving overseas. And also last year, I carried 10 employees and I had a very busy year, which mm -hmm. didn't turn out to be as lucrative as I thought it was going to be. So it's another reason for me to kind of drop. Uh, I don't like having employees. It, mm -hmm. it was just too much stress. Yeah. A lot of, uh, anyway, especially, <laughs> no offense to anyone, but working with creative people, it's very difficult to corral creative people mm -hmm. to get a single image and, and all of that. So do, you anyway, own, do you own a gallery? I don't own a gallery. No. Um, so both my parents were artists and my brother. So I have hundreds of paintings. And that's one of the, one of the reasons I'm thinking uh, and I spoke to Matt just before getting on the Zoom, Matt, yeah. with your company. Yes. Um, just briefly. So he gave me the rundown on what your basic charges are and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, one of my biggest things is um, I, I understand that um, the attention, of course, is the number one thing. Yeah. Um, some years ago, I hired somebody and I got the AI, the architect's um, list and the designer's list. And mm -hmm. I spent tons Nothing. of money. I did, I did color yep. brochures, did mass mailing yeah, yeah. and zero return on it. I know. So, so um, most of the work that I've done, the following that I have is, is, uh, is construction industry builders and, yep. and not so much direct to people. So do you have a recommendation how to uh, get new clientele. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just marketing, right? Like, you know, the, the, you asked a couple of different questions in there and I, th I think they're fascinating ones. And, and, and really what it comes down to is like, how do, I how do I market to high net worth individuals, right? That's essentially what it is. I mean, you're, right. you're, you're inserting builders. Uh, what I, how I normally get it is, I just wanna market to the interior designers. How do I market to the interior designers, right? And I go back, I go back to my bell curve analogy and it's, and it's just so, so true. And, you know, what everyone always asks is like, how do I go after this tiny little segment, which are usually high net worth people? And what ends up happening is everybody wants to market towards those people. So right. by definition, it is extremely hard to market to those people, right? And I'll use a perfect example. Um, we have a th private Facebook group. 
everyone, we call it small wins. We, we like to keep people fired up. So anytime somebody makes a great sale, we ask them to go and post it in there, right? Like small wins, like list your small wins. It, it's, it's actually pretty rad. So Gal got a deal from an interior designer, 35,000 in total orders. And everyone's asking, How, how'd you do it? Was it a Facebook ad? Was it an Instagram post? Was it an email? How did they find you? Um, the designer's daughter was following my Instagram for the last two and a half years. She told her mom. That's how it happens in real life. That's how it happens. So even in the case of the builders, and, you know, and, and, and here's another way to say it that, that would go even further. is like people ask me the interior de decorator. The, the, the builders is the same thing. The builders might be a little bit easier than the interior designers because they're not getting hit up from the artist angle. They're getting hit up from every other angle. But, you know, if someone asked me, like, Patrick, all I want to do is target the interior designers. I'd be like, okay, get onto house, and I want you to send 50 messages a day on house to every single solitary interior designer. Start having conversations with the interior designers. Get on Zoom calls one-on-one -on -one with the interior designers. 50 a day. Oh, by the way, you can do that on Instagram too. Send 50 a day. <laughs> oh, by the way, you are likely, I see Joni, Joni number two that you got, you got unmuted. I'm going to mute you and then I'm going to come to you next. Um, oh, by the way, turns out that for every 50 messages you send to these folks, it'll probably be call it like a six to 10% return rate, maybe even lower, maybe it's less than 5%. So it means out of that 50 messages, maybe one or two gets back to you. And then it takes a little while to build that relationship and keep things going. Those are the rules of the game. That's how it goes. No one ever likes hearing that. The reality is, is that you have to do the hardcore marketing and there's no shortcut to it. I'm arguing my position, sitting here where I have been doing this for as many years as possible. If you just focus on the holistic marketing and you tend to your whole entire bell curve, that's the more effective way to grow the business. There's a higher ROI of doing it that method than trying to contact builders directly or trying to contact the interior decorators better because you know they're all behind gatekeepers. They're all really hard to get. And, and how things happen in real life is exactly that story with the interior designer. If that woman was not marketing consistently on Instagram, that interior designer's daughter never would have followed her, never would have told her mom, never would have got that $35,000 sale. That's how it happens in real life. And you just you just have to go and like, Buying lists, one of the biggest scams out there and has been there forever, although I do know some good tricks to run with lists. <clears throat> but it's just holistic digital marketing consistent all year long. That's it. You do that, the score takes care of itself. No one wants to hear that, but it's the truth. It's the truth. And what are you going to do when you move overseas? Are you literally going to move all those paintings with you? Or are you going to leave them here? Oh, no, I'll take them. You're going to um, take them? Yeah, I'm thinking that like, my dad was... Um... He was a British champion boxer mm -hmm. at one, in the fifties. Mm -hmm. And he has a he has a a, a name. Okay. So, and, I, and I have sixty five of his paintings. And I was thinking that that might be an opportunity through through your website to do some kind of printing of his work because there's a story, there's an interesting story behind it. You got to photograph all this stuff so you could reproduce it, though, right? Yes. Okay. Just just yeah, yeah retain retain those rights because you know I, I hear stories like yours a lot, and and part of me wor gets worried sometimes because it's like, well, wait a minute. You're going to be running out of work here soon right like if this business is really effective if i teach you to build this marketing machine and these marketing muscles and you get this site up and you start kicking butt and the business starts going well you're going to run out of inventory right <laughs> which which i don't which i don't want you to problem. yeah that would be a great problem right but you want to be able to solve the prints the, the the larger point is is like you know you climb to the top of the mountain and now the iphone's dead and you can't take any selfies at the top of it right do you know how hard that mountain was to climb so if i get you up there i want you to have additional revenue opportunities of things you can sell sort of in perpetuity so yeah that's what's up okay yeah thank you very much yeah my pleasure and where overseas are you gonna move just out of curiosity uk oh uh, well i grew up in i grew up in italy so i want to go back there it's it feels it's more like home for me yeah i don't blame you i don't blame you Way better food. Way better food. Food is good. People are nice. Yeah, yeah. Understood. Well, I, I, I hope I hope you get there. I'm terrified. Of, terrified of your shipping bill, moving all those paintings. But other than that, um, actually, actually, you can if you rent a part of part of a container. Yeah. For five to ten thousand dollars, you can do like part of a household. Do not call me when you're doing packing. I'm not going to show up for that. I love you, Joni, but I'm just not. That's terrifies <laughs> me. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of bubble wrap. A lot of bubble wrap. Yeah. Um. Okay. Thank you. Okay, other Joni. You have to unmute again. I know it's the annoying thing of Zoom. Mute, unmute, unmute, mute. I'll let you know when you get it. You had it before. I know you can do it. You got it. Hi, Patrick. Hi. Uh, this is Johnny Chardon. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of cross trained between commercial art and fine art. Okay. And I've been in it for many a year. Okay. I did find that um, 
if I was going to be able to sell anywhere, anytime, mm -hmm. it had to be appealing to a mass amount of people. Mm -hmm. um, so I started paying attention to the fabric that was coming out, the texture that was in the fabric, the subject matter that was going to be used in decorating with curtains and um, furniture and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I'd take that information home and I would build my uh, color portfolio for what was coming out at the furniture market, which is also a fabric market at the same time. And I found by doing that, um, that I became somewhat successful. Mm -hmm. The I started representing artists and using that there as a format for suggestions. Then I felt like some of these artists thought that they were like selling their soul. They weren't painting exactly what they wanted to paint. Mm -hmm. So as for an example, if poppies were in and you love painting poppies, or you may you love painting flowers, why not paint poppies? Mm -hmm. If the poppies were uh, cadmium yellow, then and you wanted to paint them another color, why not try painting what is popular? And um, I found that I could still paint what I love to paint. It broadened my horizons and ability to paint. And I was able to touch a larger audience. And with doing that, um, I got quite a few of them published. But the downfall of that was getting it out there in the public. I'm now getting copied right and left. Mm -hmm. My only salvation with that is I've had everything copyrighted. We've won three cases so far because I am copyrighted. I've kept track of the correspondence, the payments, and the details on every one of these pieces of artwork. And from my point of view, it is definitely worth it because I've got over 120 images in the past 20 years that have been scarfed. They've been sold without my knowledge and I find out about it. And sometimes I can catch them and I can't. So I think the copywriting for me was the best thing I could have done for myself because right now I have a firm that's representing me mm -hmm. um, with a huge lawsuit. The one company hasn't paid me for 22 years. So um, I just wanted to encourage people to do that because it definitely is worth it. So there you go, Marshall. There's, there's, the, there's the counter argument to, to, to your earlier point. So how much how much money have you brought in as a result of the lawsuits on the on the copyright stuff? Uh, about seventy five thousand. So yeah, so that's pretty strong. So when when they when they took your art, how did they how did they acquire it? Like was it, they downloaded it digitally and started reproducing it? Um, I had like about eleven different companies that were publishing my art, mm -hmm. and so they were publishers. So they had the original high resolution files. Right. Got it. What I did was I kept the originals. I found that I really couldn't sell it. The money wasn't in selling the originals. It mm -hmm. was selling the image to go into print. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is some of these companies, they pretended like they were going out of business. They changed their name and then they were starting yep. to work. Yep. And yep. it reached a point that uh, I was getting more sold by somebody else and not making money. I actually quit painting because I felt like it was all for nothing. Yeah. But I, with this law firm now, they've kind of gave me some new hope because there's a lot of money involved in it and they feel pretty sure that they'll be able to do it for me. I've ran across many of law firm that wouldn't take it because they thought that the copyright, it, the uh, seven years had ran out, so I didn't have any recourse. Right. They're going after the money that I'm out of, not the idea that it's copyright, but the money that I missed out on. Yeah. So your your story's what... your story's a little different in the sense that like they had the art files, right? Like mm -hmm. you know, you, in that situation, it's totally different ball game, right? Because they have they have the, they have the originals; they can do whatever the heck they want. In in what, what what most other people say, and even to a you know to an extent, Marcelino situation, I just haven't seen where it's up on a website and somebody goes and downloads it and then you know enlarges it with software and then sells it a bunch. But when they when they have your stuff and when you have a bit of a name, that then then it's a different horse race entirely. And look, you yeah. know, you can you can you can do quite well at the lawsuits, right? Like, you know, it's just keep keeping a track on everything and it's really hard to do when those sales go on behind closed doors and you have no idea, you know. Well, you're right. It yeah. does take quite a bit to keep track of it all. Yeah. Um yeah. I you know, I had a secretary at one time that was doing it all for me. 
and it it is it's tough but it is worth it yeah yeah awesome though i love it so what are you doing about selling now are you are you sort of you remain sort of disenchanted by the whole thing well i took the lawyer suggested to me to take everything off the website i had developed one through help of course mm -hmm. that i could the customer could come in and pick out what size they wanted and also frame it at the same time mm -hmm. but during this time they said that i shouldn't sell anything and that i should take everything off mm -hmm. so right now sales are kind of slim i'm banking yep. an awful lot on these lawyers yep don't get me started on them but thank you very much patrick i greatly appreciate what you're doing yeah thanks and, it, and it's johnny not jenny or is it johnny Jeanne. Jeanne. okay yeah yeah okay. i didn't get the little accent over the e otherwise okay otherwise i would have got it yeah, I, I don't think, well, you know, just everyone's got to make their own decision. I'm clearly a very an opinionated human being, right? Um, I just, I like your situation in the sense that you've got lawyers that are representing you and everything else. I, I, I think you got ripped off because of the art publishing companies and not from random people stealing stuff. I think you still have a long career left in this. I think you need to work on your marketing. I'll, I'll preach that till the, the hills come home because I believe in it firmly. So I wouldn't wait in the meantime and you're hanging your hat on the fact that you're going to get a couple of great checks as a result of this, but you could still be working in the meantime and, you know, take that other stuff off your mind and just let those, let those processes play out as they will. Right. You're absolutely right. And I, and not to be doom and gloom, but you know, for these companies that are shady enough to be representing you, uh, go out of business, change the name. Um, you know, the only way you get a dime in that scenario is if there's a legal entity that has money in the bank account and those, in that case, in those scenarios, if those people have already been that shady and that shysty to be able to just switch companies like that, what do you think they're going to do when the lawsuit hits? They'll just do it again, right? So, it's yeah, yeah you gotta you got you gotta be careful. But I'm 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 really sorry that that happened to you. That's terrible. Well, you know, it kind of comes with the territory, yeah. and I almost expected it. Yeah. Um, you know, it, you can see my artwork on the internet, and you can see the the figure of the Indian lady that I did in the front and they're mm -hmm. dubbing what's going on in the back in like a completely different scene. Yeah. So, you know, I think what happens is they don't think they're ever going to get caught. First of all, if you're in a different state than them, mm -hmm. they think that you're just going to make the move and you don't have a leg to stand on. So why not? Right. Right. So it's a tough battle. It is. It is. But I like what you said. I don't need to be sitting doing nothing. Exactly right. I'm waiting. Exactly right. <laughs> and th yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing that infuriates me about about this whole situation. And you know, I, I recorded an episode about this recently, and it's like, I can't begin to tell you how many wonderful people like you I've talked to over the last year, week in, week out basis, had really incredible businesses going on pre pandemic, and then pandemic hit, and they've just sort of been sitting in a holding pattern the entire time, not doing anything. And it's like, you know, hoping things are going to come back, hoping things are going to come back. And it's, it's terrifying. In a lot of instances, it's like, I don't know when a lot of those other revenue sources are going to come back in the meantime. So what you can do between now and then is start working on the marketing. And I feel like a snot nosed punk for saying that because I feel like I'm asking you to like change careers when you're in the peak, the peak years of your career. Like nobody wants to hear you have to get back in the trenches and start digging again, right? Like, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be in the executive suite office and you're telling me to go back into the mail room, but I don't know. I don't know what the alternative is. I don't know what the alternative is. I don't know how else you're going to get your art in front of the eyeballs. You need to be able to sell it. Right. Like I, I don't know what the right, you know, there's, there's, there's no easy answer to it. Um, the world has sort of changed and you need, you, you, you need to get going on it. Right. Like, you know, the, the, yeah. the odds of figuring it out the other way are just, yeah, or low, but anyway. You know, and the crazy thing about it now is a lot of these big companies are what, what is left of them. They've got Joe Blow sitting at the computer and he creates five, six a day and makes his $150. I know. So, so much of it is falsely created and not hand done. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. So the art world has kind of really become tougher as time goes. But boy, I just encourage you not to ever give up because if you don't follow your heart and your dream, um, you know, you can just... It's a destiny. It's a passion. Well said. And I had to do what I had to do. Well said. Well said. And you still have to do what you got to do. So keep keep grinding. Let the lawyers do their thing. And uh, if you want, we can certainly help you. Thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. Have a great day. You too. It's great talking to you. Okay. Um, Karen and then 
I'm going to unmute you right now, Karen. And then I will get to you, Steve Inch. Keith, I see your hands back up. You've already asked a question, but I will, I will get to you. And then I know we've got a bunch in the chat, so don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll get to them all. But Karen, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you, Patrick, so much for being here. I kind of got to you through a spam, but yeah. I'm so glad I responded because you're very knowledgeable and very helpful. Oh, well, thank you. And i have in my 50s, and I've been wanting to do something like this for years. Mm -hmm. As someone who was an artist as a, as a youngster, I had a, a painting of Bambi I did from Disney back when I was 13 that people offered me money for, which mm -hmm. I never sold. So I do – life happened, got away from art. I like to get back in the art, but the main reason that got my attention was that – I am a flight attendant and I do a lot of photography. Okay. I love taking pictures and I would love to sell my photos. Mm -hmm. I also work for the Denver Broncos and I've done a lot of Super Bowls. So I have a lot of photos from that too. So my first concern is kind of like what, jo what Joné was talking about is that if I start putting up a website and I put pictures of my photos, are people going to be able to click on those and just download them without – ever purchasing the photos yes anything that's on the internet can be downloaded by anyone that knows what they're doing do we right, do, so do how do you stop that do we do the fancy there's, there's no way to stop it period um okay. if, if it's online somebody can download it those are just the rules you 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 play tricks though in the sense that okay. you know if, if you like you can watermark your images i yeah, don't yeah. i don't suggest people do it but you can do that our okay. software rips the resolution and size of them down for you automatically so whatever they okay. are going to download is nothing nothing big that you can actually do anything with right okay. um but the reality is, is that anything that's on the internet anywhere, you can instantaneously mm -hmm. get in two seconds if you know what you're doing. Right, yeah. right. So but, there is some little things you can kind of do like watermarking, but you don't recommend watermarking. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't believe, you know, despite despite what John A said, and you know, I don't believe that that it's your biggest concern, right? Okay. Like if it happens, it's going to be onesie twosie off. I mean, again, Jeanne's situation was completely different because they had right. the, the high res art file, or high right. res art file. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then the other thing I've kind of have been wondering about for years, which is one of the reasons why I haven't done this yet is because when you get like your photos and your people want to buy a photo, you got to be able to print them up to certain sizes for people. So how do you find a reputable place you can take them to, to do the prints that will be good quality prints for whatever different sizes we take, you we, might need? We take care of the whole thing for you. Oh, that is awesome. So what if I have stuff that's not like from old school 35 millimeter, like what I like to use to like to use, can you guys digitalize that as well? You would need to scan it on your end because you have the, you know, the negative, right? right? Um, but, but yes. But the way that yeah, it, the yeah, way that the it works. And some of them are slides. Yeah. So yeah, you, you'd have to scan those. But the way, the way that it works is you upload the file. Our software mm -hmm. will instantaneously tell you how big you can go. Um, oh, okay. Based on how cool. big you can go, you pick which sizes you want to offer and then what media types you want to offer. You press one button, you're done. Over. Okay, they can and then order. you guys then you guys actually do the print of whatever size that I need? Yeah. We have we have we have two print partners, um, which are just huge print houses, one oh, on the East Coast, awesome. one on the West Coast. Yeah, it's that's that's the best part of it. You don't have to do any of that. Um, you don't that is touch huge any of it. to know that. Yeah. So the one more thing I have is my grandpa was a cameraman for Universal Studios. And when he was filming a lot of movies like Creature from the Black Lagoon and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. he did a lot of photos behind the scenes. Yeah. And I have all those in slides that I'd love to be able to sell those, but they might need to be fixed up because they're old from the 50s and 40s, whatever. Do you guys also do that stuff too where you can – fix an image to make it like if it's faded or scratches, whatever, do you do any of that kind of stuff? No, we don't individually do that, but that's, that's one of the awesome things about um, having a big community. Like you would just mm -hmm. go into our group and say, here's what I have. Uh, okay. Do you know, do, do you know someone how to do this? But to be honest with you, like those old photos, um, Adobe just came out with like a brand new algorithmic based touch up thing that is insane. Absolutely oh, insane. Really? Yeah. That, that, that problem you're talking about is being solved by AI right now. And there's already like some really good stuff off the shelf that you just put it in there and it, it spruces everything up, takes all the scratches out, goes back to the original color, recolorizes wow. it. Yeah. It's insane. So you can put it on your computer and yeah, just yeah. download it into your computer and we'll fix it on the computer and then I can send it to you guys. Exactly right. Oh, that is so awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time and help. This is really exciting, and I appreciate you doing this for us because I will definitely check into your demo and stuff for sure, but I appreciate your time today. Awesome. You too, Karen. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. It'll go Steven, then Chiquita, and then I'll go into the chat. Um, you're up next, Steven Walker. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. How you doing? Okay. Awesome. Patrick, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, my really great. You appreciate your, your frankness with all this and just <clears throat> simplicity and explaining things. Uh, so my question is kind of more about branding and just, mm -hmm. I really wanted to get your opinion on it because yeah. you've talked to you know, tons of artists and have a lot of experience with it. So I've been, I've been a professional digital artist for many years and I've been working under a pseudonym mm -hmm. that as a music producer and doing all sorts of art, but it's been just basically everything across the board. And mm 
uh, I'm wanting now to take my traditional art, uh, which is primarily like watercolor mixed media, mm -hmm. and I want to create a new brand for myself. Okay. And one of the things I've been struggling with is, do I want to just use my name, even though it's a super common name, there's other artists who, are, who have my name, mm -hmm. or do I want to try to come up with some sort of pseudonym or does that even matter? It does. Yeah, it doesn't matter at all in the beginning. I mean, I would just go with your name, right? Because okay. we, you know, especially with everything that I ranted and ra raved about on video, you know, our tendency, our tendency, especially with brands early on, um, let me say it this way, is you think all that branding stuff matters, right? And not only does it not matter, oftentimes you don't get to decide what it is, right? Like you're going to be known as the whatever guy based on whatever the crowd decides to pick out of it, right? So early on, like the tendency is like, you know, I'm going to stress about the brand and I got to get this right. And, it, and I have one shot to do it. Absolutely not. It is a completely reversible decision too. You start marketing, figure out whether or not the art is going to sell, figure out whether or not it's really going to hit. I would put your entire damn catalog up and try to sell all of it and see what really hits, what hits the best. Based on that, based when you have a little more data points, then you can decide seriously about the brand. And at that point in time, you can decide, you know, I've sold 10, 15, $20,000 for the stuff. Let me, let me pay 2,500 bucks to somebody to, you know, or if you're the artist, you're going to do it yourself to, to do the logo and my font and the entire package and my YouTube thumbs and da, 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 and nail it. And that's what I'm going to be going forward. Right. But don't overthink it in the beginning, just launch, go and try and sell the stuff because what ends up happening is you're stressing about the brand in the days turns into weeks turn into <laughs> months still worrying about that brand right steven you gotta just well what, one yeah. thing i'm concerned about is the the consistency of my work is that you know i really a lot of my work is very is very it, it's yeah. not really and like that is to, and that is but, totally okay. okay it's early on it's like you, you you know this is this is like a variation of the niche selection question it's like well i don't know what my niche is and i do a little bit of this and i do a little bit of that i'm like awesome let's go throw all of it against the wall Go work on our marketing for a year and let the people with the credit cards in their wallet tell us what our niche is. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah because you want this to be a business. Don't sit around and wait. You're not smarter than your audience. You don't know. Until you've given it a shot marketing, until you've gotten it out there, gotten the eyeballs, got the attention, and yes, got the almighty credit card to come out of the wall, you don't know. You don't know what the number one stuff could be. It could be anything out of that entire catalog. I'm putting the whole thing up. I'm putting Stephen Walker and my pseudonym on the thing, and I'm going to start marketing, and I'm not even going to contemplate any of the rest of it for a year for a year until I've run multiple sales and I've started doing Facebook and Instagram ads and I've had some live art shows and I've talked about all these various different things and then see. And then maybe just maybe at that point, your audience does tell you, you know? Well, since I've already have an established pseudonym, sh should I continue just using that? Maybe yeah. create an art storefront stuff as a separate site for it and then- Yeah, I, yeah, I think I, I think you should. I mean, I, does it? do you have the, the requisite email list and requisite social followers for that pseudonym and everything else? I Yes, I do, but I've, I've been- <laughs> I've been terrible about staying up, staying yeah. up on it. Uh, yeah. I've gone through spurts in the past years where I was really promoting my music and, mm -hmm. and my, my digital art, mm -hmm. uh, but it would be like for a couple months at a time. And then I would, I kind of lose steam. What I really need is like what you guys are offering is like yeah. a, a set schedule. Like if this is what you need to do. Yes. And, I and then you need, need, then you need to be held accountable. I, you need to be held yeah. accountable. Yeah. Everyone like when I say everyone, multiple times in my own personal life okay trust me this is not uh this is this is both a window and a mirror right i'm not looking in on your world and criticizing i could just turn the mirror and look at myself um this is gonna be my year i'm all fired up and you get going and you hit the ground and you grind for three months and you don't see the results and then you quit for another year or two or three right no one gives no one ever gives you the perspective of how damn long it takes right it is it is not about sprints it is about whatever you have to give daily 52 weeks a year reevaluate what ends up happening is that's what moves mountains it's the only thing that ever does right it's no different than getting in shape you know like do you, do you work out really hard for three months and then just go right back to the pizza and beer you know and sitting on the couch like that doesn't work you have to do it, you, it it's quotidian it is right like you have to yeah so yeah the, i think the accountability more than anything else is what what will really help you those other questions um you know I would, if you ended up signing up, I would, I would do a more close audit of what's sold and what the digital assets are and what that picture looks like because I'm very sensitive to emotion. If attention is the hardest thing to get, if you already have some built-in attention, you bet your ass we want, pardon me, you bet your butt we want to leverage that, right? Um, but it's not the most important thing. You gotta, you, you gotta go at it and, and consistently try to sell and then those, those questions are much easier answered and, and, they're, and they're sort of insignificant. I mean. You know, if you had the, the, the greatest pseudonym of all time, 
you can still be the pseudonym and you. They still want to know who you are. They probably want to know who you are even more so because if you've been behind the pseudonym the whole time, they don't know what you look like or anything else. So, yeah. Right. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Those are great questions. All right, Chiquita, you're back. And then I'm going to start working the chat. Okay. So um, thank you for all the uh, up Chiquita listen because I was listening. Okay, good. Chiquita, good, good. <laughs> but um, good. I my my thing is um, I when you were talking about social media, mm -hmm. I have a lot of social media followers. What's your biggest platform? On YouTube, I have three hundred sixty-five thousand. What? On Pinterest, yeah. I have like one one thousand one one point one k is what it says. Mm -hmm. I went through trying to look to see, and these are all in my name. I yes. never use a pseudonym. It's Chiquita. Chiquita, everywhere. awesome. And so, um, Chiquita, you I need, have like you, Pinterest. You, I have like you need to sign up. Followers. You need I just to, have all these followers. You need to sign up. You need to learn. But how I don't to know do, what to do with these followers. You need to learn. <laughs> you need to learn how to do the live art show. Okay. We this is okay. all this is all that we teach you to do. I mean, you know, I I I one of the one of the principles, and and, and I like this right because we we as a business, you know, it's not hyperbole when I say. I, I have a lot of customers' data and I study the data. I literally have a meeting later this afternoon. And what my entire team does, my marketing team does, is we look at our customers' data. We look at everything that they're doing, the successful ones, and we try to reverse engineer it, okay? And I, 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 I say that setup to say this thing, okay? The live art show with my buddy, all right? Give you mm -hmm. some of the, I'll give you some of the trade craft, okay? You can see he's got earbuds in, okay? The earbuds are connected to his phone, which is live on Instagram, the software, uh, which we are leveraging to do these fancy little banners and his logo and everything else has him on YouTube. What does he have? He's got nine point nine, a little bit under ten thousand subscribers on here. He's got forty five thousand on Instagram or twenty five thousand on Instagram, and he's got like three thousand on Facebook. Okay, he sold mm -hmm. sixty two thousand dollars worth of art in fifteen days. All right, I just repeated the exact same process uh, with Meg. Where did she go on this one? Okay. Again, you know, I have no problem giving the trade craft away because no one's ever quick enough to pick it up or no one ever takes me up on it. Again, in her case, From, same, same software to get online. This is live on her YouTube page. This is live on her personal Facebook page. This is live on her, on her Facebook business page. You can't see because of her hair, but she's got the earbuds in. She's going live on Instagram. 70 pieces for a little over $15,000. There's not a lot of artists that are doing that right now, by which I mean very, very few. You know, And I, and I, go, back, I go back to this guy, okay? And his situation is a little different. Is this it? No, yeah. So this is, this is a guy that would normally do the full dog and pony, okay? Paint for six months, have an entire series, uh, take the series and partner with the gallery, 50-50 split, huge opening night, performance art, the bar in there, everything else, and then what would happen? He wouldn't retain any of his customer data and he'd take a 50% haircut. And so the last show that he had, I've looked at his financials, okay? And his the last show he had, his normal pieces start at 3,500 bucks and they go up to like 22,000, 23,000, right? Multiple celebrity collectors, this guy. I mean, I, I realize that this work is whatever, but his, his other stuff is like unreal that how talented this guy is. And he's making more money selling these off the wall uh, 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 pieces, okay? Than, than, than he did from the gallery split because he's able to do this directly and he has like a follower account, right? Which is, which is just insane. So yeah, I, I, I think that the world is completely changing. I think that the fact that you can leverage live video in this fact is, is absolutely insane. The, the rub of it is most people don't have any followers, Chiquita. You've got 300,000 on YouTube or whatever. You're, you're playing a completely different ball game here. I know, and they just follow me just for me talking and chatting. Well, and I find that I find that very easy to believe. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not my art. That's what I'm saying. It's not. Yeah, my art isn't on those things. Yeah, and like my Instagram, I just started it a month ago, and there's like it's not that many, but I have like three thirty eight. But yeah, you know, I I haven't linked anything, so it's not like anyone else. Like I even on my Instagram, I think I have one piece on there. Yes. I'm I am I am convinced that if what you are saying is true, that you sold that those pieces and that you have that type of a following, that all you gotta do is start leveraging it and you will do just fine. You need to sign okay, you well, need to, you need to sign up, I'm, my dear. I'm, I, I'm, I am confident. I'm just a fan of, yes. a fan of listening to you. You are I think you are gonna awesome. get the ROI. <laughs> you are gonna get the ROI as soon as we raise the prices though. Okay, thank you so much. Yep. <laughs> and you're getting out of the way and, and I'm just and I'm just doing that. Um, all right. Oh, he's still dancing. That's weird. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put this other one on. He's got he, so this guy. Just as a, a side note, because I'm on his I'm on his page, he's got 
like all of these 10,000 followers just from this video. So I'm gonna give you guys this to watch while I'm going through the, the questions. Um, Melissa, you can see Melissa is asking, does this hurt your chance of getting into a museum? Absolutely not. Why isn't the video playing? Oh, where did it go? I got so many, I, even my windows have windows. Oh, there it is, it's gone. Okay, uh, I'm gonna keep going through the chat. And da, 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 da. bear with me. Okay. Yeah, Rita, when you, when you request a demo, they'll give you a list of a whole bunch of different customers' websites you can see. Yes, Brandon, you can disable, you're right. Anyone can screenshot anything at any point in time. Um, thanks for being in the workshop, it was a pleasure, you've gotta go. Um, blessings, okay, email me, whatever. I don't understand what you're asking there. Um, what is this? This is a long, a long one. And Matt and Juan yourself has sent me a bunch of emails and that is why I finally showed up, so thanks. I'm just starting out as an artist, I don't sell prints in my portfolio, I'm needing to prepare so I can stick. Okay, that's just way too long, I don't think I can do that. What, what kind of bank account do you need, Marcelino? It doesn't matter, whatever kind of bank account, like, you know, as long as it's got a checking account and a routing number, then, then you're good to go. Um, it, will, it will connect. Oh, there it goes now, it's not okay. Um, what is that about? Every time I go off of it, it stops. Lame. Let's see if that hacks it. Yeah, it's a fun thing to have in the background. Um, yeah, Roberta, I don't know what your questions are. You're gonna have to email us to me. I like that, Emily. April, give her a follow with her Instagram account. You see it, it's art by Emily Page. Send her, send her a thing so she's gotta get out of that, uh, gotta get out of that Starbucks though. NFTs, yes or no, is JA still on? Yeah, you're on, uh, look, it looks like you're just on the camera. So JA, I recorded um, a video, the CEO of Arts Reference and I did, uh, we both hold crypto, traded crypto, love crypto, uh, super bullish about what NFTs are. By the way, NFTs are um, non, fungible tokens, it's a cryptocurrency thing that everyone in the world's talking about right now. We've got some pretty strong opinions on them. Uh, we think they're interesting. We think they're a way, 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 way far out um, to come do. But I'm gonna send you, I'll send you JA after the fact. Okay, good, it's already in the chat right there, but I'll, I'll send you um, this video too after the fact. I think you should watch it. It'll give you our opinion on, on where they are, what they're doing. Um, you know, as I continue scrolling up, the, the, the biggest issue with them right now with NFTs is people think like, ooh, my art is never sold anywhere, but I'm, I'm gonna go jump into crypto and all of a sudden it will sell. No, not the case. And you know, to sell NFTs and be good at it, you have to do your marketing over there, it turns out. So you're never gonna get around that. All right, what else? Bear with me as I'm kind of working through here. Uh, Karen, I got you. What else? Yeah, London, so we teach you to market all year long. So, you know, he's asking, do you guys help artists with, with marketing? Yeah, it's all we do all year long. And, and that's all we will be doing all year long for perpetuity because it's the single solitary biggest problem. Um, okay. Hi, a lot of my work with handmade print and alternative process, I just wonder how I'd sell those online because you can't see or feel it with your hands and or the digital file also looks different than the physical ones. Yeah, so, so Bo Yuan, is it Bo Yuan? Bo Yuan how I think. Um, you know, the, the, the video for you, Boyan, is he like, I'm gonna unmute you um, if you like to talk. You don't have to if you don't want to. But the video for you is gonna be even more important, right? Like, you know, to, 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 to show the, the, those types of particulars. And are you in a situation where you, you hand produce every single solitary print? Um, yeah, so hi, Patrick. Hi. Um, I, I make like cyanotypes or lumen prints and I like to, frame my artwork mm -hmm. I'm at it and frame I like to do everything mm -hmm. um, by myself mm -hmm. because then I can see the the real quality yes um but like I also want to like sell my art yes and I'm just not quite sure like how to get it started yeah so you got you've got a marketing problem same as everyone else I I love that you're doing the print all, all on your own, but I don't want you to do the print all on your own. Not because I don't think that what you're creating is awesome and it very well might be integral, but all that time that you're spending on creating, actually making the print is not time you're spending on your marketing, right? Which is getting the name out there and finding buyers for your particular art. How do I pronounce your first name, by the way? Oh, uh, you can call me Bo, but it's Bo Yuan. Bo Yuan, I'm, yeah. I, you know, I'm assuming that's Chinese, I can't speak it, so I'm just gonna call you Bo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you need to work on the marketing same as anyone else. You know, if you're if you're telling me that like doing the prints yourself are like very, very integral to the art, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, that like that's a massive part of your process and the pride and how you think view the work. Okay, great. But you know, we love we love taking the printing completely out of artist hands because we want you 
we, we want we want to take as much time off of your plate as possible just so that you work on the marketing right because it's just that it's that critical of a situation but in your case you know it, to show that texture and to show that context and be able to talk about it in depth like mm -hmm. you know there's nothing better than than holding the piece right mm -hmm. and explaining it and getting it really close to the camera and showing the fact that it's ready to hang and talking about the quality right and and, yeah. and merchandising it it's just another one of these amazing things that 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 selling via video can do i see okay yeah thank you it's it, it it's marketing well, I know. I, I wish. I wish there was an easier way to to do it, but it's it's all just marketing, right? It's all just marketing at the end of the day. Um, good call today, though. Great questions, I think. Um, thank you guys all for joining, Brandon, for coming again. Also in the car outside outside Grandpa's house, I presume. Yeah, good man. Um, we're having a sale. Are we having a sale, April. Will you post the details of the sale in there? Um, I think we're having some sort of a sale. Um. Spring sale, summer sale, spring sale, you know, like free six months or something. Yeah, sp spring special. So if you're if you're interested, uh, if you look, if you're just finding out about us for the first time, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But if you're somewhere on the fence, okay, great time to request a demo. Um, they get crazy. It runs to the end of the month. Um, I know they're throwing in free six months. I think, uh, and there might even be another deal. So you know, only only if you're seriously interested. If you just figured it, found out about us, we're not going anywhere. Don't worry. Um, but it is a good sale. It's a good deal. And it, it expires at the end of the month. And so we will email you after the fact with all the links, um, the, you know, the links to everything that you need, everything that we mentioned, uh, the live art shows, watch those things, picture yourself doing one, pick up the camera, turn it on and go for it, right? And turn on and go for it. It'll be so much easier. I hate being on video. I would live the rest of my life never being on video if I could, but I'm contrarian. And I want you guys to be contrarian. These video sales are selling art at one of the most alarming clips of anything that I have seen in my entire career of doing this. I believe it is fundamentally going to be the future. And it's not just for the art and photography industry, but boy, does it work good for the art and photography industry because not only do most artists suck at marketing, this solves for it. You know what else most artists suck at? Selling, okay? And merchandising, okay? And do you know how you get to Carnegie Hall, Joni? Practice, practice, right? Like go and do a hundred of them and then come back and talk to me. And you will find that like, he knows what he's talking about. I just sold a whole bunch of art that I didn't even think was possible. So that's it. That's what I got. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Great rest of your week.